Tim Kalashaw. This is a man who writes stories every single day. Sometimes they're true, sometimes they're not. Who cares? He is the columnist for the Dallas Morning News and Around the Horn contributor. Good morning, Tim. Good morning, Dan. I assume you're calling about the first place Maverick. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, you're going to talk about the Cowboys okay. here. Okay. Uh, I, I'll check back in with you on Luca here coming up in a moment because he did have a great quote. And I'm going to bring it to your attention. All right. Uh, Jerry Jones is not helping the situation here when he makes these comments. Um, does he realize in the moment that he's not really helping the situation by making these critical comments? He, he's very aware. He's extremely aware. <laughs> okay. This is not new to him. He knows, <laughs> uh, he knows how his words are parsed after every game. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's just laying it out there. The Belichick is a genius and that, 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 uh, the coaching and the fundamentals beat the, beat the Cowboys yesterday. So he's, he's, he's got a plan. What is the plan? He's starting to execute it. He's starting to execute it. Well, I mean, I think if, if the Cowboys don't get to the NFC championship game, as we've talked before, it's going to be real hard for Jason Garrett to stick around. Um, he's got a fine record. We've talked about it many times. He goes nine and seven basically every year, but uh, the two and three playoff record, the losses in big games, no wins at all over teams this year with winning records. Uh, you know, they beat up their division. They're four and zero against their horrible division yeah. and they're two and five against everybody else. And they're probably going to win the division. Did I, did I overinflate them, Tim? I, I think they have all the ingredients of being an NFC title game caliber team. What, what, what is missing here? Uh, that that's that's what gets to the the coaching and and whether they take advantage of matchups, whether they see things that other teams don't they do they do you ever watch them play a game and go oh man look what the Cowboys figured out about that that other team you see it obviously constantly with New England but even beyond that you see it with other teams uh, they don't have the only position in the team that is to me average is their secondary, but their front seven was supposed to be really good. Demarcus Lawrence just got a hundred million dollars. Yeah. Those linebackers are supposed to be really good and that should cover for the secondary a little. And it does sometimes, but uh, they start out every game behind. They start out every game looking a little bit like they don't know what, what they're doing. Is that Jerry Jones calling you? That is. Yeah, clearly. Okay. <laughs> You're going to stay on with me, and you'll let that go to voicemail. Yes, I will, yes. Yeah. Uh, I was trying to figure out the strategy yesterday. We make it seem like the rain stopped and the wind stopped when the Patriots got the ball for some reason, and it was only affecting the Cowboys here. But that whole game plan here of going against New England, what did you make of it? Or did they have a game plan? You know, I think the plan to run the ball more was, uh, was, was a good idea. Uh, and, and that succeeded somewhat. But, yeah, they looked completely surprised to be playing in the rain and to be playing with a wet ball. And, you know, where it really showed up, obviously, it was on special teams. And I think Belichick had seen what happened in the Detroit game where Tony Pollard didn't field a kickoff cleanly, and it could have been a disaster. And so they did a couple of those kicks that don't go to the, to the end zone, and the Cowboys are all over the map looking like the Keystone Cops out there. So, you know, it just – one team knew what the weather was going to be, knew, knows how to play in it. And Garrett's kind of attitude is always kind of, we'll play anywhere, anytime. We just go play football. But that's <laughs> that's kind of a losing lament in a situation like this. What do you make of those tripping penalties? Now, that, that's weird. And, and uh, I've never – you know, usually when you've seen tripping, it's a guy on the ground or something sticking his foot out. And fairly obvious. This is this is Travis Frederick raising his knee about three inches and catching a guy as he goes by. And I've never seen that called. I, you know, they can tell me that maybe by the letter of the law is tripping. But how, how many times have you seen that? I don't. I don't. I haven't seen that. That was that was clearly not 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 helpful to the Cowboys' cause. I also didn't understand when they were down inside the red zone and it's third and eight. They, I mean, they settled for the field goal. And in the moment, I said, I don't know if you're going to get back down here again. I would have two plays. I would, I would be geared up for two plays and try to get the first down. Um, 
you know, the defense was playing pretty well. The weather, obviously, an issue. But I, I didn't think they were going to get this opportunity again. And I said, I think Troy Aikman said at the time as well, I'd be going for a touchdown. Your thoughts yeah. on that? I, I wasn't as in full agreement on that. I mean, I think okay. you could have gone for it, obviously. I thought fourth and seven, you're playing the New England Patriots. Well, what are the Cowboys at the end of the day on third downs? I think they were two for 13. I mean, it's a really hard team to make that play against. But to your point, there's a little over six minutes to go. You're assuming you're going to stop them. And, you know, cutting the lead to four doesn't do you much. No. You're still going to need a touchdown at some point. So I don't think that was a great move. I don't think that was a a, a killing, uh, uh, you know, fatal move for the Cowboys yesterday, but it, but it wasn't it wasn't exactly aggressive. He's Tim Callishaw, Dallas Morning News columnist, around the horn contributor. How big is the uh, Luka Doncic fandom in Dallas? Well, I mean, it, it, it's amazing. I was there Friday night, and he just he had a normal game Friday. Uh, he had thirty seven and fourteen, and they won by forty two. Um, so it, it's just kind of crazy. I mean, we. We thought mistakenly Doncic Porzingis is going to be one and one A. Um, there's only one one, <laughs> and Porzingis is getting better. But I mean, he's uh, as has been pointed out many times for a 20 year old, he's putting up numbers that only LeBron put up, and and he's beating most of those. It's pretty fascinating to watch. Luca was asked. Uh... After the game, the win against Houston, why the Dallas defense is better this year? And this is what he had to say. We were much confident this year. Uh, you know, uh, last year we had Dirk in defense, so it was tough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dirk on defense, which is tough. That's a great answer there. Defense has got to get better. A legitimate answer, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but, but, you know, the Mavs had to know what they were. They had to see something that nobody else was seeing because you had Phoenix and Sacramento who passed on him. Yeah. So who is the genius behind this? Um, you know, I think they'd looked at him for a long time. And then Donnie Nelson's history, you know, he, he's, he was the one who got Sharunas Marcellonis over here uh, to Golden State, that's like almost 30 years ago now, and he's coached over there a lot. So he would have been on him early. I think a lot of people liked him, but those other, those first two that you mentioned, they just have it, oh, we need centers. We could take Eaton and Bagley. Just, okay, you do what you want to do. You let this guy go. Uh, but teams did that so with it, Jordan, not to compare Luka to Jordan. No, but, yeah, but they but always did, you know, oh, yeah, we've got a good six five guy. We need a seven footer. <laughs> okay. You do what you want to do. Uh now, you know, for Atlanta's sake, I mean Trey Young has been great. Yes. He's not Luca great, but he's been really good. So that trade isn't terrible for them. But yeah, the Mavericks to get him at five is 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 tremendous. And I was talking to Reggie Miller about this, uh Jalen Rose about this. Like we love the new story and Luca is the new story, whereas the Greek freak is better this year than last year. Harden better this year than last year. LeBron has reinvented himself. The odds of Luka winning the MVP, in your opinion, would be what? Uh, they're still very, very long. I mean, th those three guys that you mentioned that have all won it are having great years, and, and we're still we're 16 games in. So people are eventually going to try to do something to get the ball out of his hands. It, I, it amazes me the the way he still creates open three pointers is step back three and people let him do it. And maybe they can't figure out how to not let him do it. But even, even the way teams defend Harden, it's like they, they know what they can't do there or try not to. Um, so the, the odds are long, but I think he's got a great shot to finish in the top three as a 20 year old, which I think I saw has happened. I think somebody has been in the top five, three times ever. So are you on around the horn today? I am on tomorrow, Dan. Would you like me to, you know, give you some secret signal or? I don't know. I, my ear? know. I tell the audience to tune in because I truly believe you. I mean, you're a journalist, mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. just feels like you disappoint my audience. <laughs> I think that show disappoints its audience <laughs> on a regular basis. We've been doing it for 17 years, and we'll continue to disappoint Could you audience. maybe put a sign over your shoulder and... 
Mm, woody like. Yeah. Some sort of signage. Yeah. Like something like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that'll happen. Okay, we'll tune in what tomorrow. Else? What else do you got? <laughs> <laughs> I'd say adjust your tie, but you don't wear your tie. I haven't worn a tie lately. Should I go back to the tie? Okay. Plasky wears ties every day. Yeah, but he doesn't get extra points for a tie. Yeah, I was going to say, does he help him? No. no. Does, does, does he have a good winning record? No. <laughs> Isola wears ties. Does Frankie eyes? Does he get? Does he get a lot of wins? I don't think so. Well. It'd be nice if you gave this audience a little acknowledgement. I mean, we've been okay. there for you. You have. Yeah. You have. <laughs> Your army on Twitter is, is impressive. Thanks, Tim, for taking time out today. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Thank you. Canada. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. That's Tim Kalashaw. Dallas Morning News and Around the Horn. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune in to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV. Stream for free on VR Live or download the Dan Patrick Show app.